Hey everyone, Tammy Davis, and here I am in my car, because um, this is the best place for me to film this video. Um, why? Because, well, I got into a really interesting conversation this morning, and I thought, you know what, that is video material. <laughs> and um, it just so happens to be that I am out and about today, and wanted to um, share this these thoughts with you. Um, so thank you for joining me. If this is your first time to um, watch one of my videos, um, allow me just to briefly introduce myself. And that is, um, again, my name is Tammy Davis. I am a, um, a master clinical um, phytotherapist. I've called myself an aromatherapist in the past, but is actually far more in, um, involved than just essential oils. But I am a big advocate for essential oils, and that's the predominant um, way of helping to restore balance or stability is the better word to the system. So um, my background does include pharmacology and I have um, continued to do extensive research with regards to um, plant components and their effects on various systems and mechanisms in the human system. That said, that's actually what brings me to this video. Um, because I was talking with somebody who does a lot with structural work, and I said that um, to learn the structure is really too much information for my head. Um, I already have a lot going on in my mind as it is, and I really do understand the body um, in a way, I should say the chemistry, or how to uh, influence the chemistry of our system in ways that um, that is just so much information that for me to try and understand the terminology, you know, the structure is just, no, it ain't happening. <laughs> um, I mean, yes, I do know bones and muscles and so forth, but you know what I'm saying. Um, but on that note, in fact, this individual actually said to me, well, you know, he likes to talk with me because he likes to learn from me because I seem to understand neurochemistry and so forth. And I explained to him that, um, one of the theories that I've had for very, uh, for a very long time, most of my adult life, is the more we seek to know, the more there is to understand. Um, I feel like at some level that is really how we came to define infinity, because you know that math, you know that the um, I think it was Sir Isaac Newton, right? When you cut an apple in half, you can keep cutting things in half. And so there's there's where infinity is. And I feel the same way about knowledge. And a large reason why I say that is because, well, again, I do study um, a lot. I do a lot of research around um, neurochemistry, the various um, neurotransmitters and hormones and so forth. And I'm not going to lie to you. But essentially, there are so many conflicting reports out there. There are so many conflicting studies. Um, and so the bottom line, if I were going to bottom line that whole thing and all the information that I see and read and wish that these different parties would actually communicate because you've got different scientists researching different aspects of human life. But let's keep in mind, the, there's... 7.5 plus billion people on the planet. That means there's 7.5 plus billion different bodies. And when these scientists are studying, they are, um, th when they're doing the research, they're conducting it on a, a, a limited sampling. So there's not as much variety. And so certainly they can garner enough um, validity to their theories. Um, but they can't say that it's 100%. You know, they're not giving their percentages pretty much. They're just kind of su summarizing everything. Um, and so the way I, I want to bottom line it is that the human body has the ability to adapt, just like everything else in nature, and that the chemistry absolutely influences itself, you know, depending on what's going on. And again, like I said, you have 7.5 plus billion different bodies so how one person's system is being influenced by its own chemistry as it relates to the information coming in meaning other chemistry because that is how nature communicates is through chemicals is going to be different 
And so the best way to do that is to bring stability to the system. Now, what does that got to do with what I want to talk about? Well, um, it comes with the, it ended up, what this individual actually said to me was, you know, I, I told him that furthermore, I really, even though I do pay attention to the human chemistry, that's not where my primary focus is. My primary focus is on the study of drug development um, and the use of plant constituents in that research. And what they're looking for is how these plant constituents are affecting the human uh, mechanisms and systems. And um, systems meaning more along the lines of cycles, not so much like the cardiovascular and the respiratory and the digestive system, although I do pay attention to the digestive system. But I'm not looking to stimulate the immune system. I'm not looking to activate anything in the cardiovascular system when I'm working with oils. I'm actually looking to restore stability to the system. And so when I'm talking about systems and mechanisms there, it's more along the lines of the glycolytic cycle, the Krebs cycle, um, the, those types of systems. And um, which brought me to the point of um, somebody that I just started working with um, this earlier this week and um, she deals with depression she's going into menopause she also has to deal with yeast and um, she went gluten-free and was feeling better and the way I talked to her and again if you haven't watched any of my other videos I encourage you to do so because they are focused around primarily the stress response not stress as we know it to be, which is mental and emotional and sometimes physical. It's basically the stress response, which is a built-in protection mechanism in the human body. It's built in throughout nature. It's not just us. Plants have it. Animals have it. It is a stress response. And what that means is that the body has, or nature has the ability to activate and deactivate various responses in order to accommodate this protection mechanism. And I'm going to include the link with this one as well to um, kind of get a sense of what happens, the physiological effects of stress. And I'm pretty sure it's a limited list, but I'm going to include it here for you anyway. And um, But the point to that is the stress response, again, when it when it's kicked on, um, we produce higher levels of oxidative stress. Oxidative stress has a very necessary component to our existence. Um, and so the body has the ability to switch that off. This also goes along, fo follows along the lines of the epigenome or um, the methylation pathways, also what it's called. Uh, many people are getting their um, DNA tests for, to test the MTHFR and so forth. And this is all part of the system that is basically has the ability, again, like I said, to activate and deactivate itself in response to the protection mechanism that we are wired with. When this is ongoing, when this doesn't relieve itself or it doesn't have, it's not relieved, then what ends up happening is we no longer break down our carbohydrates, our fats, and our proteins at the cellular level. Yes, there's a lot of people focused on digestion, but digestion involves more than liver, stomach, and bowels, or for that matter, even the pancreas. It's the way the body is actually assimilating these nutrients at the cellular level. And when that's not happening, we no longer especially break down carbohydrates and proteins. And so when we're going gluten-free, there's a lot of, we know, you know, there's a lot of foods that are gluten-free. And pardon me, my, <laughs> my screen blanked out and I couldn't see myself anymore. So <laughs> that was a little weird um, at any rate. So pardon that little um, moment there. At any rate, so what uh, my computer is trying to get my attention to do something else. So um, when we go gluten-free, and there's a lot of products that are gluten-free, and we feel better. I mean, that's without question. Even like I was talking with this new client. I mean, she does. We, we are getting what we're looking for, which is symptom relief. But symptom relief as well, let me back up and say symptom relief is actually should be and can be qualified as 
stress relief because if you're relieving the symptoms then you're taking the pressure off the body but it's not enough because again we have to be able to modify the way those genes are working in order to better assimilate so if you're going gluten-free I have one question for you is it the gluten that you can't tolerate or is it the carbohydrates themselves that are problematic we don't know because if you cut if you cut out gluten or gluten if you if the gluten products you're cutting out not just because keep in mind I asked that question because gluten is actually a protein and it's a protein that's meant to be that is that the body has the ability to break down so if we're not breaking down gluten if you are in fact truly gluten free or, or I'm sorry gluten intolerant it's an indicator that the body's under stress. And um, yes, again, removing the stressor is a, a wise move, but the fact is, is that we still need carbohydrates to help with hormonal regulation and production. We also need carbohydrates for energy. If we're not getting the carbohydrates for energy, then we start to store fat because fat is also, re because we're in starvation mode and then we start to store fat. So it becomes a, a systemic problem. So relieving the symptoms and eliminating the food um, is a good start but until we actually assist the cells with assimilating the nutrients um, we're not relieving the stress fully and we're going to remain in chronic state of f fight or flight we're going to remain in that chronic state of stress or in you know chronic protection and um, like I said gluten is a protein Obviously, carbohydrates turn into sugars in the system, which are absolutely necessary. And we don't really know what we're actually not breaking down. More than likely, it's both. Um, the same can be said for MTHFR. The MTHFR gene itself is the folate cycle. And folate is a B vitamin that we turn into folic acid, that we actually can turn, our bodies actually do turn folate into folic acid, and folic acid is actually necessary for the assimilation of amino acids, because amino acids are necessary for every single process in the body. So if we're already having troubles at that level, the body has flipped a switch because it's not needing all of that right now it's in survival mode and again I am going to encourage you to actually read that sheet of, as to what happens because it's not worried about getting more sustenance it's worried about surviving the moment and I use that word worried lightly but you you understand what I'm saying it is it's the stress response has been activated and therefore other cycles are deactivated and a lot of these are reversible the more irreversible ones occur due to medications and of course the more serious genetic defects that we see it's oftentimes it's I'm not going to say impossible but it's going to be more of a challenge to reverse those but the epigenome is more of a fluctuation and um, and we see changes within that all the time so and that is modified by many chemicals not just essential oils so being mindful of what you're putting into your system is absolutely necessary and like i said essential oils do assist with these various cycles now the question generally follows as to what oils i would recommend and that would be that's going to be different that's going to determine that that would be determined by what's going on in in the individual um because we you know maybe uh, amino acid problem isn't isn't the issue um maybe gluten isn't the issue maybe it is all about helping to break down the carbs maybe it's all of it so we really need to know more so about what's going on with the individual and i am offering consults if you already work with oils you can you know um, hit me up over at synergessence.com and um, sign up and get a consult doesn't include oils if you decide that you want me to do the oils for you then i am currently um, um what am i trying to say discounting the consult basically giving you the consult and just providing you with blends so those are some options because it again i know that it doesn't fall well it's not a favorable thing for me to say well it depends on you but the truth is it really does depend on you just like a medication doesn't work for everybody just like an herb doesn't work for everybody just the reason why some people can eat some foods and other people can't eat those foods your system is your system and we have to work with where your system currently is
in order to make um, headway in that and reducing that protection mechanism. But again, it's about restoring stability to the system. The body is already balanced. It's constantly seeking balance. Nature is actually already in balance. We may look at problems or we, we may see problems and, and think it's out of balance, but essentially nature is consistently seeking homeostasis. And when the body and, the bo and, the, and nature starts to um, go into a healing crisis, that's our call to help provide some level of stability so it has more strength to do what it's designed to do. And um, on that note, um, if I welcome all your questions. Like I said, um, I am very much involved with the study of plant constituents and how they are affecting us. And this includes both foods and oils. Yes, I do look at herbs, but herbs begin to start to fall into that medicinal realm. And I'm not about controlling the body as much as I am about helping to stabilize it because nature is designed to control itself. In fact, it already is. So our job is to um, work with it, to align with it, and help provide stability so that it can work more in a favorable way for us. All right. Thanks so much for joining me. I look forward to your questions. Tell me at synergestance.com. Like I said, please visit my website at synergestance, you know, go to synergestance.com where you can read more about my consults. You can ask me more questions about that. I'm, I'm here to help you. And um, also follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Tammy Davis 8 on both of those social medias. So thanks again for joining me. I look forward to hearing from you. All right. Oh, and by the way, there is also Synergestance on Facebook. I haven't been doing much there, but if you've joined me on there, please feel free to ask questions on that for um, in that format as well, because I'm really wanting to help people find their way into a more stable form of wellness. All right. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye now. There it is.